Good morning, friends. Welcome back to Bear Bottom Makers. I'm Heather. We're going to talk some more about seed storing today. As you guys can probably see, we have a lot of seeds that we're going to be starting early this year because we want to have time to grow these because our growing season is pretty short. The topics that we're going to cover today include how to find out when your last frost date is and what exactly does that mean. Using that information to plan when you start your seeds and figuring out how much space you need to start your seeds if you're starting them indoors. Most of the seeds that you're going to be planting in your vegetable garden and many of the flowers that you'll be planting will be annuals. So the most important piece of information that we need for planting annuals is we need to figure out what is our last frost date. So question number one, how do we find out what our last average frost date is? So I'm going to show you here on our computer. One of the really easy ways to figure out what your last frost date is, is you can go to the Farmer's Almanac website. Or, as we talked about in a previous video, if you really want to get involved, you can pull up a table of average normals. And this is based on averages. That will help you determine when you can put your plants in the ground. Now, what, now that last frost date is not a guarantee that when you plant, that there won't be a frost. You're still going to have to do a good job watching the weather report. We're going to base starting our seeds off of that average last frost date. In Minnesota, we're going to be setting things out just around the time of Mother's Day. That is what we're aiming for. That's what we're shooting for. Step one, we figured out our last average frost date. Now, step two, I'm taking out all of my seeds and going through them and deciding which seeds need to be started early and which ones don't. Now if you're brand new to gardening, looking at the back of the package will be a big help for you. It often will have the information that you need. So for example, these pineapple ground cherries, we got quite a few of these from the farmer's market last summer, so we decided to grow some of our own this year. So looking on the back of this, it says that we need to start our seeds six to eight weeks before our average last frost date. So go through your seeds and figure out which ones need to be started early. So as you can see, I've gone through this wonderful seed starting system that Kevin made for me and I have pulled out all the seeds that I've determined that we need to start early and I'm going to set these aside. If you did decide to use our Excel method of sorting seeds, there's a really good step you can do with this information too. Using my average last frost date, I am entering in onto my Excel spreadsheet and basically using that to figure out, and I have this nice column here in red where I put the actual date that I am going to need to start these seeds inside because instead of going through all of my seed packets in the future, I can just pull this information up and look at it at a glance. I can even sort it by type of vegetable and know what I need to pull out and what I need to be starting. If you don't use an Excel spreadsheet, which I'm sure a lot of you don't, you can still do the same thing with your actual seed packets and you can sort them into piles. And even though I have my spreadsheet, I think I still might do that just because I don't think I'm going to go to the trouble of filing them all back and then taking them all out again. So now that I have them out, I've got them separated and I've gone through each one and determined, based on my last frost date, when I need to start these seeds. Now, there's a little twist to this because although a lot of these seeds it says to put out after your last frost date, some of these are cold hardy and can actually be put out earlier. So also take that into account as well. For example, if you have something like onions, and it says to start X many weeks early, but then you can actually put them out four weeks before your last frost, you need to figure that into the equation. So, we've got all our seeds out, we've gone through. I have gone through the spreadsheet as you can see, and I've entered my estimated date as to when I'm going to start to, when I'm going to start those seeds. If you watched one of our last seed starting episodes, we talked about 
four things that you need to think about before you buy seeds. And one of those things was taking into account how much space you have. How many of these lovely little seedlings are actually going to fit in your garden and have space to grow to maturity? Now the temptation always is to start too many. And I do that as well. And I actually do that on purpose. If I want to have just one or two tomato plants, I'll start four to six of them. In case some of the seedlings don't do well, and that way I can pick the strongest ones. Sammy Jo had a really good idea, our daughter, to sell a lot of our extra plant starts on our corner in town. And surprisingly, within an hour and a half, we had sold pretty much all of them. I was actually really surprised. So I'm not too worried about starting extra this year because I think we're going to do that again. Now, I need to figure out, oh my goodness, if it's something that I want to have just two of, but I'm going to start four to six, I need to think about how much space I need for all of that. So we're going to take this all into account, go through, do the math, and then figure out how many seed starting cells do we need to start with. We start with the tiny little cells. Um, and then as plants get bigger, if needed, we'll transplant them into slightly bigger pots. Because we're going to be growing them inside a lot of these for about eight weeks indoors before we set them out. Since we're going so much bigger this year, we are also going to have to expand our seed starting setup. One of our future videos that you're going to see is showing you how we do that. We have a method for starting seeds inside that has worked really well for us in the past, but we have to really expand it because we have so many more seeds that we're going to be starting this year. I'm so excited to have you guys along this year to see us, to watch us from the very beginning to grow this beautiful vegetable and flower garden. I mean, look at these. We're going to be starting quite a few flowers this year too. So, so excited to have you guys along. If you liked this video, we have other videos in our seed starting series. There'll be a link at the end of this video. You can check that out. We'd be happy to have you watch those. And if you like our channel, please subscribe. If you like this video, feel free to share it with somebody. We're a pretty small channel and we want to get the word out. Thank you so much for watching, you guys. Bye. We're starting brassicas pretty soon. We're going to be starting onions. We've got pumpkins and squash in a contest some seeds from Roots and Refuge. So very excited about starting these. Some cold season, um, some short season varieties that we got from the Rusted Garden. 